Thank you so much for the support on the last video. That was really neat to wake up to over a thousand views. You know what's not so nice? The temperature being 100 degrees and not having an AC unit. By the way, I dragged this AC unit all up these stairs by myself. This thing is heavy as hell. And as I was dragging it up the stairs, the f***ing duct on the back of the thing fell off. It's just sitting on the floor. What do I do? We're missing on and off the felt. Last episode, we lost $1,700. And this episode, I don't have a functioning AC unit. <laughs> Swing and a miss. We're 0 for 2. Hopefully, today's session will go a little better and we can finally get a hit. We're back at the 2-5-10 home game. Last video was a scorching $1,700 loss, so let's not do that again. This week, as soon as I arrived, Adam told me that he got me a gift. Really nice wrapping kit, first and foremost. I just wanna... <laughs> you don't want a singular piece of tape? You don't... Oh, fucking thank you so much. This actually looks good. This actually looks good. The reason he got me a salad is because I always ask and he never has one. This thing was basically a sea of unseasoned chicken with a few strands of lettuce, but you know what? It's an improvement, so we'll take it. We're gonna need all the protein and brain power we can get for all of these interesting hands that we're about to review. Starting off the night, we look down at a pretty hand on the button, cutoff raises to $15, and I call. Adam in the small blind raises it up to $65. <coughs> Why do you always have to be an asshole? Did you grow up like this? Is that <laughs> Adam only has around $180 behind, which means this is just a fold. If he had a thousand effective, then it's a slam dunk call. But since he's so short, we don't have enough equity to be profitable here. However, this kid makes me make bad decisions. It's so difficult to play against Adam. The whole saying, if your friend jumps off a bridge, would you? I'm swan diving off that motherfucker. You know what I mean? If my friend's jumping off the bridge, I'm calling $65. We're going to evaluate a flop. Flop comes not so great in 7-5 deuce. Adam checks to me. This isn't a board where I can rep much. If he has an overpair, I'm not going to be able to put a lot of pressure on it. He could also be trapping with 10s plus. For those two reasons, I just decided to check it back. The turn is about one of the best in the deck. It's the six of hearts, giving us a gut shot straight draw and a flush draw. Action ensues. $81. <laughs> All in. Once or twice. Uh, there's not much analysis here. This is two chimp brains playing a swing set, so we decide to run it twice. And unfortunately for us, both of them brick out. So we're starting the night down early. Note to self, never give this nit any action. He bought me a salad, but with the amount of money I just donated, he owes me a steak dinner in Vegas. Nice hand, kid. Around 10 minutes later, this kid shows up, so the game got a lot softer. <laughs> As I'm editing this, something tragic has occurred. Justin recently got diagnosed with PD. For all those who don't know, it's a terminally ill condition called punting disorder. He can't seem to hold on to his chips. They all flee from his stack as soon as he places them on the felt. At this rate, his bankroll only has one to two weeks to live. And I think it's contagious. So frankly, if I ever go back to this home game, I'm gonna wear a mask and a fucking hazmat suit because I can't afford to be punting chips. We waste no time getting involved as we look down at ace nine of hearts in the cutoff. It's now auto straddle, so from here on out, we're playing 2 5 10. I open to $30, and only the big blind and straddle are called. Flop comes king 9 8 2 diamonds. Checks to me, and with metal pair, I have showdown value, and there are a lot of draws out here, especially hands like jack 10 of diamonds that can go for a check raise. So I don't want to get blown off my hand, plus, I want to get to showdown as cheaply as possible without bloating up a pot. For those reasons, I check it back. Turn is an innocuous looking three. Justin now leads for $60. He's gonna have a lot of drawing hands, maybe a weaker nine, or just complete air. However, it's still possible that we're beat by a weaker king that checked the flop to play and flow. So I proceed cautiously with a call. Big blind gets out of the way. We're going heads up to a river. My grandpa passed away in 2018. He was a bricklayer, and this river would make him proud. It is the two of clubs. Uh, about the brickiest brick a bricklayer had ever known. Doesn't change anything at all, but Justin doesn't care. He fires out for $200. Justin, it's too early for this big guy. It's too early, what are you doing? This is a pretty large sizing, so he's saying he has either a really strong hand or a complete bluff. 
but something about this just felt like it was for value. I think the most probable case is Justin checked the flop with a king, and now he's betting for value. I think he's trying to pull a little bit of reverse psychology, like, oh, I'm betting bigger, so it looks like a bluff. But I think Justin knows that I often wouldn't check a king here on the flop, so he feels comfortable betting this size with a weak king, knowing that he's ahead most of the time. It's really early on in the session. I think there will be much better spots later on, so I decided to trust my intuition and let this go. Justin flashes the seven of hearts, which seems like a tease and that we made the wrong decision, but he later on told us that he had a really weak king. So, nice fold us. Speaking of better spots, we pick up pocket kings in the big blind. Hijack makes it $50. Since I'm out of position, I go 4x to 200. Folds back around to Justin in the hijack. Justin doesn't think $200 is enough. Justin 4 bets to $475. By this point in the night, I was drunk off my ass, I had three shots of tequila, and my brain juices were not flowing. My brain was like equivalent to the Hoover Dam. There was no activity up there in the prefrontal cortex, I promise you. I went into the tank for like three minutes. Not because I didn't know what to do, but because I could not do 8 plus 11. <laughs> I couldn't figure it out. I ended up 5-betting to $1,100, and Justin snap folds. I don't want to break up bases all the time. I've been fucking crazy. <laughs> <laughs> this is the longest pre flop take I've ever seen in my entire life. I'm from New Hampshire, and the winters get pretty cold here, so I'm used to making a snowman. Here we pick up two of them in the big blind. Middle position raises to $50, with no straddle, by the way, so that's quite a large sizing. I'm a little nervous, I pee my pants just slightly, but I make the call. We're going heads up to a flop with slightly soiled trousers, and it comes Jack 4-4. Four, four. I check it over to him, and he quickly checks it back. The turn is the 10 of diamonds, introducing a backdoor flush draw and another overcard to our pair. However, I don't think this 10 hits him all that much. I still put him on ace-king, ace-queen, two overcards that really don't connect. Since I don't think he's strong, I don't see the value in betting because I want to give him the opportunity to bluff. For that reason, I check it, but again, he checks it back. The river is the three of clubs. For a third time, I check it, giving him the opportunity to bluff, and this time, he fires out $50. I slide a chip in the middle signifying a call, and he just mucks his cards. Nice to take down a little pot. For the next 30 seconds or so, we take inspiration from Rampage and punt off a few hundred dollars of my stack with not so glorious hands. But anyways, we move on. Next spot, we pick up pocket queens in the hijack. There's a button straddle with two limps. I raise it up to $80, the button calls, and then the small blind limp raises to $310. Okay. This only happens with kings or aces. I shit you not, the only reason I did not fold preflop is because I'm recording. Uh, yes, queens, preflop, fold. I grabbed $310 in chips, and I paused for like 10 or 15 seconds, because I was like, there's no way that I'm ever good here. It's, um, what am I ahead of? Ace-king? He's not doing this with jacks. I don't even think he does this with ace-king. He just raises immediately. I ended up putting the money in the middle, and the button surprisingly comes along too. So we're going three ways to a flop, which comes 10, 9, brick. Small blind continues for $435. Jesus Christ, what do we get ourselves into? Since I called preflop, I can't let it go now, because if he has ace-king, he's probably going to fire one street and then give up on the turn. So, I feel pretty handcuffed, but I'm in here, and the button gets out of the way. The turn makes this whole situation even worse. It's the ace of spades. The small blind now slows down and checks. Huh. I'm not gonna put any more money in this pot. I check it back. Until the river is the queen of hearts. So we make a set on the river. The small blind checks again. What do you do if you're in my position? Do you bet small? Do you bet big? Or do you check? The small blind has around $1,500 behind. I cover him. My opponent has aces or kings. That's it. I'm not putting on anything else. I think it's highly probable that the small blind saw the turn and said, Oh no, 
I just turned a set, this is going to kill my action. So from the opponent's point of view, the only way more money goes in the middle is if he checks and Cora decides to put it in. So when this river card comes, yeah, we river a set, but what are we getting value from? Kings have an easy fold, and we're still losing to pocket aces. With that being said, there's no value in betting here. So I decided to check it back, and thank God we did, because my opponent turns over pocket aces. We lose a big pot. I should have just folded preflop. If you're down money, what's the best way to earn it back? Yeah, pick up pocket aces. We're just getting hit by the deck tonight, and I am certainly not complaining. We're in middle position, and I raised up to $35. The small blind and big blind both make the call. In this moment, I was saying, Dear God, Justin, please go for a squeeze. And I see the twinkle in his eyes. You can see the gears turning. Oh, he's gonna go for it! You can literally see in his eyes. There's so much dead money out here. This is a perfect squeeze opportunity. Justin fires $200 into the field. Let's go! It's actually pretty funny. Here's where the metagame comes into play. I think this is a perfect squeeze opportunity, meaning Justin can be 3-betting me light. Since I think he's gonna 3-bet light, I can 4-bet light. So I 4-bet to a size of $550. Justin's also aware that he's 3-betting light, and he knows that I know that he's betting light. So if he knows that I know he's 3-betting light, he knows that I can 4-bet light. So Justin goes for the 5-bet jam of $2,000! <laughs> we snap call and tell him the bad news. He always has ace in the Our buddy in the four seat has ace four suited, and we're off to a run out. Uh, well, I think that was the quickest $2,000 I'll ever earn in my life. Uh, credit to yours truly. Thanks, buddy. Justin understandably goes on to... <laughs> Things you like for like five minutes because I was drunk. <laughs> <laughs> and then you had aces, you were like, it went to you and you were like, yeah, I need that. I need that. Like, yeah, that has to be a block. <laughs> you had kings and you were like, tanked for like six minutes and you're like, okay, 600 or 1200, whatever you made it. And then you got aces, you're like, yeah, what are you doing? Table one. Who does that? That's so good. I thought you would do a little holiday with aces. Snapchat <laughs> <laughs> If a pocket aces double up wasn't good enough, we pick up aces again! The run bad is seemingly over. This time we don't get any action, but we do take down around $30 of dead money. Thanks to the charitable man in the four seat, we are up around $1,000. And the knight is still young. King 10 in the big blind. Hijack makes it $20, and only I call. Flop comes king 7-6. I decided to check it over to the preflop raiser, playing in flow, and this time he checks it back. Turn is the worst card in the deck. It's the ace of diamonds. I check again, Justin bets $25, and I just fold. I only have $20 invested. It's not worth playing a big pot when I could already be dominated. Unfortunately, my phone ran out of storage, and I didn't record the last two hours of the night as a result. We got in a few really interesting spots that I would have loved to record, but I just didn't have the storage. You had to be there. It's like that kid in middle school who said he had a girlfriend, but she went to a different school. That's kind of this whole situation. The hands were cool, but you'll never see him. Take my word for it, though. Our stack was quite monumental by the end of the night. We ended around 5 in the morning. Time to cash it out and head home. We were in the game for three bands, out for 5200 and change for a profit of 2200 Really nice to recoup all of the winnings and then some from our latest $1,700 loss. That's all I got for you. So if you enjoyed, please be sure to leave a like and subscribe and share this with someone who might be interested in a poker vlog. I really appreciate all the support recently. Not only coming soon. So, until next time, see ya.